No one can preach to me. That's Benjamin Netanyahu talking to the American president like, how dare you suggest that I not do something or that I do something I don't want to do. Nobody is going to tell me what to do while I'm telling you what you're going to do. Anger, of course, in this circum these circumstances, whether it's it's the slaughter, the massacre, the murder that we're witnessing, or the things coming from a Netanyahu or a Biden that are just incredible insults, so disrespectful to anybody with a brain. We don't merely watch global events unfold, we shape them. That's what it means to be the ins indispensable nation. That's what it means to be the world's superpower and the world's leading democracy. The world's leading democracy, the world's leading superpower. We're the greatest nation in the history of the world, he has said on, on previous uh, clips that we've shown here. And yet he can't get Netanyahu to do anything he wants. And there is no hostage deal. He's talking like we have all this power, uh, which apparently has no limits. And yet we can't get the least thing done. So what did that anger, what kind of impact did that have on the target, which was Benjamin Netanyahu? I think I don't I think I have to tell you, but watch it from his own mouth. Nobody can preach to me about that. I think that my um, option of being adamant and exerting pressure, that's the way to do it and not weakness and surrendering and surrendering after they massacred us. Absolutely not. So let me ask you that question. I, I mean, let's let's just take it at face value. He says nobody, nobody wants those hostages to get released more than I do. And we're doing everything we can. Is he telling the truth? No, I can't. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it, it, there's no indication that he's telling the truth. I mean, he's he's done nothing but uh, one maneuver, one action, one statement after another for these last almost 11 months now um, where he has just sabotaged any type of, of ceasefire agreement that would lead to uh, the Israelis getting their people back. What you've had repeatedly is, first of all, you don't see mention of a ceasefire by the Americans until I would say until the new year, until it seems apparent to the Democrats that uh, this might be an issue for us in this election year. And so then, then starting after the new year, you start to see the White House and the administration start to talk more openly about a ceasefire. Of course, they're completely in cahoots with the Israelis. They are acting as Israel's uh, negotiator, essentially. Um, and then when things heighten uh, around the time of the primaries and the uncommitted movement in the U.S. starts to, to show some strength, and the Democrats feel that political pressure, then you start to see Biden talking very forcibly about a ceasefire. You also, too, if you remember, go back to March, it's when Chuck Schumer and some other people say, hey, you know what, maybe Netanyahu is not the best person to be leading uh, Israel. So you start to see th this, this um, uh, uh, fighting, this infighting between Netanyahu and, and, and the Democrats because Netanyahu's genocide, Israel's genocide, is having an effect on the Democrats' political chances in 2024. Uh, but essentially, all the Democrats want is just to pay lip service to this, to make it seem as if they are really acting on it, to just put on a political display, do some theater. Uh, you know, so what you have is you have had where, you know, back in May, President Biden goes on television and he says, I have a new ceasefire uh, agreement. This is going to work. The Israelis have agreed to it. This is an Israeli deal. We need Hamas to agree to it. And Hamas actually agrees to it. And then, of course, nothing gets done with it. And in July, the Americans come back and say, oh, we've got another ceasefire agreement. We need Hamas to agree to it because this is coming from the Israelis. The Israelis are on board. We need, right? And, and then, of course, Hamas accepts that July 2nd agreement. And what you just have is you have a continuation of the Israelis First of all, really not speaking about openly in the way the Americans are about a ceasefire deal. The Americans are ones coming and saying this is the Israeli proposal. Uh, and then, of course, pulling that away and either through an inaction or by changing the terms. So that's yeah. one thing we've seen continually happen is that Israelis keep changing the terms. Hamas agrees to, to a, a, a framework for a ceasefire deal and the Israelis change the terms. And, and now they've made it so that it's simply unacceptable. Uh, you know, the the. the uh, uh, I wish I could remember off the top of my head, and maybe Gary could find it. Uh, it it's a couple of days ago, but the Ha Aretz uh, headline about how uh, Netanyahu, uh, his spins and his lies, have finally torpedoed any chance for us to get the hostages back. 